Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his yard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have been looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig it out, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it had been in the news in Galilee, apparently Pontius Pilate massacred a group of Galilean pilgrims in Jerusalem. And it raised questions for the disciples. When sketchy details of a massacre are combined with Pilate's reputation for brutality, the stories and rumors started to freak people out. I can hear him now. Those disciples must have done something to provoke the Romans. If not, God must have snuffed them out because they were sinful. Right, Jesus? And Jesus answered them with the question, do you really think that those murdered Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? And then there was more unsettling news. Eighteen people were killed when the Tower of Siloam collapsed. People wondered, did the tower collapse because God brought judgment down on 18 sinful people? A tower collapsing because of weak structural or engineering design doesn't even seem to be an option to consider. And again, Jesus asked, do you think those people crushed under the tower were worse citizens than all other Jerusalemites? Like our focus in last week's sermon, the question of theodicy is brought up again. Do you need a reminder what theodicy is? Yes, please. Theodicy, it's a Greek word based on two words, God and justice. Where is God's justice in the midst of evil? In this case, the question here is, were their deaths related to their lives and to how they lived? Do your actions bring about God's justice? But this group of Galileans were on a pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem. Weren't they faithful people going to the temple? Or were they so corrupt that they deserved death? Were the people in the vicinity of the tower in the right place at the right time because they were such awful people? The disciples were attempting to understand those tragic events by putting things into perspective. Maybe, they thought, if I can get to a logical explanation I'll find comfort in this tragedy. So let me ask you a question. How far do you get when you ask yourself why questions? How far do you get? I see someone doing this. Not very far, right? Well, guess what? Jesus knew the disciples couldn't go far with their questions. And he answers their questions of, did their sins bring about their deaths? 
with a very short response. He says, not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. And then Jesus doesn't waste any energy on discussing the quandary of theodicy because there is no answer. It's not very comforting, is it? So instead, Jesus moves on. And what does he move on to? Story of a fig tree. Sounds like one of those politicians that just can't answer the question. <laughs> so let me ask you, have you ever seen a fig tree in nature? Who has? Because you lived in California. Exactly. Do any of you have fig trees in your yards, on your farms? No. Are there fig trees in Nebraska? I doubt it, right? So I'm going to let my own fig tree story pull me away just for, just for a second, just for a second, because I have to share this. The first time I encountered a fig tree was in the south of France. It was the year 2000. It was my first trip. I was there for work. I know, I know. I suffered with all the work I had to do in France. And I had to go back to Paris in the south of France three more times. But I had to go since I worked for a French company. And I was walking in this village with, my, with a co-worker and our French host. And all of a sudden, I was taken over by this fragrance that I can't even, I can't even explain it. But it stopped me in my tracks. And I asked our host, what is that I'm smelling? It's amazing. And she said, figs. Now, I couldn't see any fig trees because we were standing next to a stone wall and apparently the fragrance was wafting over the wall. Have you ever smelled lilacs? And there's a lilac tree not even close by, right? It's that same kind of thing. And I was smelling the fresh greenness of fig leaves in real life, something that I only smelled in candles and perfumes. So now, if St. Mark's was located in the south of France, but it's not, <laughs> you would be able to relate to Jesus' story of the fig tree. We're in northeast Nebraska. So how about if I retell the story as an apple tree? So Lorraine has an apple tree, and it's planted in her backyard, and she keeps looking at her tree, waiting for it to produce apples. Lorraine loved apples, and she loved to make apple pie, applesauce, candied apples, apple butter, apple turnovers, apple crisp. Did I say apple pie? I'm going to say it again, apple pie. But the tree wasn't producing any apples, and she was ready to chop it down. But her neighbor thought she should give it more time. Just give it, just give it another chance. Care for it, her neighbor said. Fertilize it, water it, prune it, spray it, talk to it. But if it doesn't produce next year, then you probably should get rid of it. So can you picture an apple tree easier than a fig tree? Good. Because I'm going to stick with apples today instead of figs. So why are we suddenly moving from a tragic story of, of slaughter and collapsing buildings and speculation of why it's happening, why are we suddenly talking about apple trees? Well, imagine that you are an apple tree in Lorraine's yard. You see her every morning, she says hi, you flutter your leaves at her, that's how you do it, but that's about it. You have this amazing ability to work with her, but you aren't. You have this wonderful talent to produce apples, but you aren't. You have this marvel marvelous capacity for procrastination not realizing you might get chopped down. 
So what are you doing with your time right now, my fellow apple trees? Jesus' story is about time. Now, bless you. It's spring. I was sneezing like crazy this morning. So Jesus' story is about time, and now is the time to live because you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We had this expression in New York. You might get hit by a bus. It doesn't work here. Maybe a tractor. But the tractor's really, really slow. So maybe, never mind. I'm not even going there. But, because, you know, you, you, really, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Did the Galilean massacre and the tower collapse victims know what was going to happen to them? Of course not. But what did they do with their lives up to that point? With this time that you have right here, right now, is a time for us to repent, to turn our backs on things that separate us from each other and from God. Turn our backs to hatred, to bigotry, to fighting, to abuse, to standing to standing idly by while others suffer. You know, you know what I mean. And what happens when we turn our backs to sin, when we repent? We become alive. We produce apples. And because we are producing apples, Lorraine now has apples. She can make applesauce, (laughs) candied apples, apple butter, apple turnovers, apple crisp, apple pies with homemade crust, of course. Mmm, mmm. And then she's going to be, sh- then she'll be able to share all this stuff with her neighbors, maybe even a stranger. And what impact will that have on others? They will become alive too. They will also produce apples and pay forward the love and compassion and life Lorraine showed them. Do you see where I'm going with this? The time you have been given, my fellow apple trees, brings life not death. That given grace of time can produce fruit, life, and lead us to share that life-giving grace and time with others. If we don't use that time that we've been given to produce fruit, we are not growing, we are not producing, we are not living, and we are as lifeless as a chopped-down apple tree. So I was writing this sermon the Johnny Appleseed song came into mind. Do you know that song? Who knows it? No one. Great. I'm going to teach it to you. I learned it from my aunt and uncle because they sang this before meals. I thought they were really cool because they sang. The Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, you know that, right? The second verse goes like this. And every seed I sow will grow into a tree. And someday there'll be apples there for everyone in the world to share. The Lord is good to me. I forgot to ask someone, so I'm going to need some help, because I was busy fluttering my leaves around. I'm going to need someone to go in the back during um, announcements and cut up some apples for you. I have apple slices. Nine apples, there's an apple core. I have to do this, ding, ding, ding. Put them in a bowl, there's tongs, so we don't have to have people touching. So can someone do that for me? Great. Now, what's the purpose of me giving out apples? Well, it's not because we didn't have coffee hour set up. I would have done it anyway. But I want you to take that slice of apple and don't just eat the apple. Pray with that slice of apple. With your first bite, think about the apple story. With the second bite, Give thanks to God for giving you the time that you need to be a productive apple tree. Time, care, and nutrients that you've been given. 
And with your third bite, repent. Turn your back to sin. Commit to reconciliation. And then, go out and grow. Help others to grow. And bring life as you have been given life. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. Amen.